Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Oh, need to go careful, that one's just been made. Okay, so number one, apologies for a slight delay today. Uh, Sir Andrew Newton put out a Dymo Primo build, uh, and I've just watched it myself. Looks really good, looks really good. I can't wait for Andrew to get this one in the sky. Uh, and again, I think he's going to really like it because, he, he, like he says, it can land and go anywhere. And it, plus, it's got huge, great big flaps on it as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking for that one. And I will put a uh, link to Andrew's video in the top right-hand corner and also in the video description for you as well. Really, really cool. I like Andrew a lot, to say the least. Uh, right, anyway, uh, on to today's topics. We have wall hanging. We've got mini. We've got mini Talon update. Uh, we've got some eighteen six fifty batteries to cover. Uh, get FPV. Mm, you'll see why my facial expression is like that in a few moments' time. Uh, T-shirt slogans. Need your help uh, with that one. Uh, the oh uh, wombat update and oh yeah, just some general worky stuff I'll mention in a moment. So uh, wall hanging. I need to go and get my photos open because. I have been really struggling for space in here, so or in the office. So I've been and chucked out uh, one of the uh, what should we call it uh, sofas, which I had in here. Uh, and what I've been and done is just a coat hanger. So all I did get, all I did was get a coat hanger, do uh, one of those metal ones, uh, and just make a circle and just wear a pair of pliers and just bend it round uh, to make some of these funny little loop things. So the idea is on the top of here we can use some string and all I've done is just wrap it round and that seemed to just hold it fine. And then we got a loop here to hold on to the back of the motor. And what I was able to do was get a collection of models, excuse me, uh, up on the wall out of the way. So right now it really isn't tech sumo season for me. Uh, so I've got my two tech sumos. I did have three but I gave one away to Dave. Uh, so we can, in fact, Dave, where is your tech sumo? I've not seen that one on the flight line yet. Uh, so yeah, I've got two tech sumos. I've got the uh, the Raven up on the wing, the little rainbow one up there as well. In fact, I need to get that one back down again because that I'll take that one for a chuck later if I can. Uh, and then the Hummer 3D as well, which I'm wholly surprised that that thing is still in one piece because the amount of times I've nose jobbed it, uh, being a having fun, need to get that right. Uh, near on the ground has been yeah I've had to put bolster over the nose so yeah I've got one two three four five models up out of the way uh, what I did for the back of the Hummer I just hooked it through the the foam on the back should be perfectly fine uh, and if it does show any signs of wear what I'll do is just get an ID card and glue it either side and then drill a hole through the middle of it uh, that will make a real sturdy uh, uh, mountain joint on the back and then also to get the slopes or wings up on the wall as well now unfortunately the top wing which is my combat wing actually fell down uh, my approach for that was to use the same hooks but there isn't anywhere to hook them on because there's no motor mounts so what I did do was get some sticky bat velcro and folded it over uh, and then use that but because of the weight of the big combat wing, and you wouldn't believe the amount of carbon fiber rods I've got in this one, uh, there's basically an A-frame which runs like that, uh, and across, uh, all the way across the model, made out of, I think it was four millimeter carbon fiber rods, and there's two mil carbon fiber rods running forwards, uh, and also probably the same on the underside as well. That wing is absolutely rock solid. Um, I kind of over-engineered that one, but it, there's no chance in hell that wing would ever break. Uh, not even with my flying. Uh, I, it said combat, so I built it for combat. Then we got my Zach Speed, and of course we've got the fantastic Weasel XP sat underneath there. Oh, the, the, the like the rudder fin, which it hasn't got a rudder, but the the fin uh, for the Weasel XP. I've just put a bit of Velcro. Uh, sticky back velcro uh, that about here which means that I can put the uh, that fin and just attach it underneath the uh, control horns uh, and it stays there it's a great way of transporting it but those models tend to get used uh, all in one go 
So if we're going slope sawing, then they all get, get chucked in the bag and they just go together. Uh, and when they're not being used, they can now stay together. And I've just put a little screw at the top and use some string to hang them down. So I've got loads of space in the office today. It's really peculiar. Normally I'm having to step over models uh, and they are now up out of the way. Happy days. Uh, topic number two is mini Talon. So last night I decided that I wanted some me time. So sorry, no video recording last night. Uh, and what I did for that, uh, basically I just tried, uh, the mini talon has been dragging on for too long. So what I did was, and I'm quite pleased with my job, which I've done on this. I've embedded the L9R receiver in there. I've got one of those 3D printed uh, antenna mounts, which keeps them at 90 degrees. Now I've put it uh, that way round on the wing uh, so that it causes minimal drag uh, while in the sky yeah very very cool uh, sanded off the bottom cut a little recess for that and then goop glued it in uh, there were a lot of questions yesterday generally across the whole of YouTube for me uh, in the comments about uh, what's what glue to use uh, for me it has to, uh, I haven't got a tube here on my desk it has to be goop plumbing glue Absolutely brilliant stuff. It is my go-to glue of choice for pretty much every model uh, in most circumstances. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's what I use for that on there because I trust the glue. Uh, and then because I'm paranoid, the antennas will get a little dab of goop glue and they will get a cable tie as a physical restraint uh, around them as well. I've cut a little track out in there. That L9R, it sat in there. It's literally sat in there beautifully flat on the top. Uh, and also uh, for that one uh, is that it, what was I going to say? Yeah. Oh, the, the hole at the bottom, it's like wafer thin. That's like probably one of the best cutout jobs I've ever done uh, because it literally is wafer thin underneath and I didn't break the foam underneath just using that cutout technique. Uh, it works absolutely brilliant. I wouldn't have been able to get that kind of accuracy uh, if I'd used the uh, soldering gun to plunge and then cut out. Uh, yeah, using the knife was absolutely fantastic and I've cut a little hole there so the antennas can come up and then they'll go uh, then across uh, to the antenna mount. Uh, also, yeah, I had to make up some custom wiring looms as well. Uh, so which side is this? I'm trying to second guess it. Yeah, we got four wires in there. Uh, so I'm guessing that's the receiver side. So I had to make up some looms and I just so rate. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna put links to the, 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 the server leads uh, in the, well, the extension leads in the video description uh, because the quality on them uh, is just unreal and I, I will get a separate review out for these uh, servo extension wires they are absolutely fantastic and what I've been doing uh, is buying the longer looms well I've been by bought every single size they got which is 10 15 30 45 and 60 centimeter uh, lengths uh, when they've got of course they've got the connectors on either side uh, and because they're twisted it lowers the interference which you get especially for like a long run like that but what I've been doing is hacking up, uh, taking one uh, one server extension lead and then just unpinning uh, uh, one wire from that and then making up my own looms uh, for, the, for the different models. Uh, and then I did cut a little trench, which you, ah, there we go, thank you. I did cut a little trench in there and then just run the pliers through and then that's also gonna be a flush fit uh, underneath too. Uh, what else have we got? Let's have a quick look. Uh, the video transmitter. Oh yeah, the note on this one is actually a big tip to Dave again, which you saw me mention yesterday. Uh, what Dave did on his Hornet flying wing uh, is that he didn't use the, the same route which I did with those the strips there, but what he did do on the underside, which I'll show you in that photo, uh, is that that's a piece of ID card which I've cut out and you can see that I've already been laminated it as well. But then uh, because I always like a physical restraint on the video transmitter, uh, it, well, you don't need it in the receiver because it's actually embedded in the wing. There's no chance in hell that's gonna come out. But for the video transmitter, I may need to take it out at some point in time and change the channel, for example. Uh, so the way which I get around that is by using a reusable cable tie or cable strap or Whatever you, whatever you know them as. Uh, and But the problem with that is is that you do like to, well, I do like to pull it up kind of quite tight to make sure it doesn't come out. But the thing is, is that underneath the foam will compress 
And what Dave did on his Hornet wing was put a piece of ID card underneath uh, so that the cable tie will come out of here, go across here and then down there. And then it's got a much wider area to spread the load, because when you're pulling it tight, across the phone so it won't dig in as much and ultimately have a much stronger uh, grip on the video transmitter itself. Now going back to the previous image, I'll just zoom right in here. So what I've been doing on my other models is using some carbon fiber strip, but the problem with carbon fiber strip is that it conducts electricity and could potentially interfere uh, with the transmission waves which come out of the uh, video transmitter. Now I was thinking about that, that, well that's not really ideal. So what I've been and done is that I got some ID cards, so you can buy them off eBay for a couple of quid for a big pack of them, uh, and then I just cut a long strip of them, about six millimeters, made a little indent all the way down there, and then poked that down inside. So uh, instead of using carbon fiber like I would have used done previously, in this case what I've been done is use plastic, and that appears to have worked really, really well. I'm quite surprised by that. Now, little note for you, I didn't use goop glue on that. I actually use CA glue, and the reason why I use CA glue, uh, because I've got some quite f thin runny stuff, which I bought off eBay, uh, and I just ran it along the top, and then you, you can actually see the CA glue running down inside, uh, and then just gave it the, the actual piece itself, just a quick wipe over with CA, uh, and then just sank, sank it down and used the back of the craft knife to push it down in the wing, uh, and again, it's all about spreading the load. So having a cable tie uh, coming out and then being pulled tight uh, that close to the actual video transmitter itself uh, is uh, that is uh, it will spread the load when we're clamping it down. And again, I'd like a physical restraint on there. Uh, and as far as the covering goes, is that you'll see the covering which I've got in a moment. Excuse me, and I will run the covering up to about here. Uh, but then I will keep this open to allow a decent amount of airflow. Uh, what else have we got on here? So a little quick nose there. Yeah, there's the, you can see the custom wiring loom, loom which I've made there, and I've got all the solder joints in there and, and up actually hidden inside of the wing where I felt that they were safest. Uh, and then you'll see a cl cl collection of different colours here. And this is why it was nice buying the Fataba uh, and the JR wires. Uh, is because I was able to get red and black for positive and negative to feed the power, uh, power supply to the video transmitter. You've got orange, which I'm using as video. So video is normally yellow and yellow, orange, it was the nearest color we had. And then white is it typically depicts uh, vid um, audio. Uh, so that wire and which then comes through, runs through to uh, uh, just a normal JR plug on the end. Uh, and then I've also got just one wire hanging off it, which is for the audio, and then that will go to the audio output from the vector in the main hole. Uh, yeah, and then we gave her a damn good covering of laminate, which worked out really well. I'm really impressed with that job. Uh, it slow, just this laminating lark is actually kind of straightforward. It just took quite a bit of time. So I had about an hour, and I ended up spending about an hour and a half on these. Um, maybe a little bit longer if we include the looms and just tracking all the uh, the wires in. And you'll notice in both instances, I've stepped out away from the servo just to try and cut down noise. I, perhaps I should have gone out a little bit further, but I didn't. Oh, and another note as well, inside of these wings is a tube. Uh, one of the, I've, when I put this in, this rod is actually got a bit of glue on it for some reason. And when pulling it back out, the inner tube inside came out on the end of there. So if you've got a mini talon, that went in the filing cabinet. Uh, if you've got a mini talon, just check that inner tube. Uh, or just for sanity's sake, you'll see that there's some holes just here, all the way along that rod. Just drop, and you can see my CA glue bubble there. Just drop a bit of CA down those holes, just for sanity. Uh, it shouldn't cause too much of an issue, uh, but I, I was now a little bit concerned about that. So uh, again, it came out, so I, I used CA glue for that. 
because um, it just seemed the right thing to do. And again, because it's a quite a thin CA glue, which I've got, I was able to put some over the rod itself or the tube itself uh, and then just drip a few bit, bits down there. And then I really didn't know uh, that it was going to be stuck in there really good. Oh, and another daft note, in the in the actual tube itself, I did block off the end with a little bit of laminate, which I just used the, the, the um, uh, laminate iron on the end just to block off the end. So when I pushed it all the way through, I didn't end up inadvertently filling up the tube uh, with CA glue. Daft point, but it would have made it life tricky later on if I did do that. And then finally, this morning, I've got that far with it. I am going for a silver covering on the top of the wing. So the understand underside of the wing has been done in clear laminate to keep the hull and the underside of the model um, clear or white. Uh, and then for the wings, and I'll cover it, I'll probably carry this across the top of the fuselage part as well, I am gonna do in that silver, uh, chrome silver uh, covering film, which I bought off Hobby King. Now, this just doesn't do it any justice because it is so shiny. It's super, super shiny. Looks absolutely fantastic. So I've still got some work to do on that one. So that's a quick update on the Mini Talon, um, which kind of brings me on to another topic, is that I did buy some 1.3 ornaments, a gigahertz ornaments, and some 433 megahertz uh, kit as well. Uh, but the thing is, is that it just didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons which I've got up here uh, is that, yeah, we got on there. Uh, this is from Get FPV, by the way. Let me just explain myself from Get FPV. So that was back on the 15th of November. Uh, over a month later, they've only just been and sent the replacement antenna out. So I don't know if you remember this. I had issues with one of the IB crazy antennas uh, and I refused to use it. Uh, so that kind of that massively delayed or the mini Talon build uh, and yeah that's only just gone out now a month over a month later so you make your own decision on that one next topic is 18650 batteries now while I, you're reading the specs on the screen uh, I had that many 18650 batteries arrive on Saturday uh, I will be using these more extensively in models. Now these are, let me just get this right for you. They are NCR 18650B batteries. Uh, they are rated to about 3,200 milliamp hours. So each one of those cells, which is that big, which is uh, approximately six and a half centimeters tall, uh, is, rated to about 3,200 milliamp hours. Uh, yes, absolutely nuts. The only downside to these really are the, the soldering uh, of them, which you definitely do need to be very competent to solder them or at least get someone else to spot weld them for you. Uh, uh, but the other downside to these uh, is actually current draw. Unlike a LiPo, for example, where it, even on a 10, so those big 5200, uh, backs packs which I use you can draw like well, they're only rated to 10 C But you can pull like 52 amps out of them uh, these ones per cell uh, recommended discharge is 1 C which is say um, 2.9 amps Which is not a lot so that's why you put them on top of each other like that uh, so then you can safely draw out say 6 amps or 9 amps if you put three packs together so I bought that many specifically for the Mini Talon. Um, they may actually get broken up and used in other models. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I will be using 18650 batteries more uh, more frequently now in the, in, in the future. Uh, quick little note, uh, prices do vary massively uh, on these batteries. I just wanna make a comparison here, uh, is because I bought those off Gearbest. They did actually take one month and one day to arrive here, so not the speediest of services compared to say Banggood, which does typically seem to be uh, around seven to 10 days on average to myself anyway here in the IT Kingdom. But that said, uh, Gearbest, 13 pounds 29, Banggood, 17 pounds 23, and that's apparently with a discount of 38% off the top as well. So do shop around with those. I will put links to both of those in the video description for you. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't point out is Hobby King, uh, they have done their nine drones racing, so if you enter your drones, you can 
go and have a look at some frames. Uh, and there is a new model out in their 12 days of fail for planes because they kind of forgot about the whole weekend. Uh, there was a new model which I spotted, which was that one there. But it's a complete fail. And the reason why it's a complete fail because it's only available in the global warehouse. It's like kind of pointless. Why did you even bother doing it? Because it'll be like a million pounds in import tax, and because it'll be a bloody great big box, uh, and it'll take forever to get here. I don't don't even know why they even bothered. Uh, to be frankly honest, uh, what else do we have? Uh, T-shirt. Oh right, T-shirt slogan. So where was it? Ah right, I need to check the other screen. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing today is that there's a local company just here uh, in Bristol, uh, which I'm going to go down and, and I'm going to get a couple of sample t-shirts printed up. My question to you is that do you have any suggestions on some slogans to go on some t-shirts for Rag the Nuts Off, uh, for the Rag the Nuts Off channel? Uh, if you do, let me know in the comments section underneath this episode. I've got some really funny ideas for myself, uh, but... I don't want to mention them because I'd like to see what you come up with. So can you think of what would you wear on your front or on the back of your t-shirt? Um, let me know in the comments section on, uh, in the underneath this video. Yeah, any suggestions, very much welcomed. And uh, I'm gonna go and get, say, a dozen printed off uh, and then we'll see what happens with those. And the last topic, but one, uh, is the, wom the Wombat build. That gets started this evening, so the mini talon will get finished today, uh, and then that just that's now clear clear deck uh, clear decks to then get on with the wombat build. The only thing, uh, the only consideration which I well, the only part which I'm not 100 percent sure on right now uh, with the wombat is the connection of the booms uh, at the back to the actual wing itself. That's my only little piece of doubt, and I will. Stick a message over on the Team Legit Facebook page today to see how other pilots tackled that task. Uh, and that's my only unknown for the Wombat. The rest looks pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go and get it glued up and then uh, we'll then make the channels as needed uh, for the different pieces uh, to go on here. Um, yeah, should be pretty straightforward. But the only piece which I've got an issue with right now is that I don't know like the best way of getting those tail booms to mount into the foam. Uh, at the back and then also get enough support in there as well because we will be thrashing the living daylights out of this wicked little one map thingy uh, and the last topic is that yeah today is actually a work day uh, and i'm going to be yeah i've got to do the one map but nothing else is really going to get touched now um, i've got a lot of coding to get done for work so tomorrow might not be that exciting but if I've got a progress update on the Wombat, I will share, with, share it with you tomorrow morning. So on that note, everything which I've covered this morning, well, besides get FPV, I'll put link, no, I'm not even going to put links to Hobby King on here. Uh, I'll put Andrew's, a link to Andrew's episode uh, in the video description for you. Uh, I'll put links to the NCR 18650B batteries. Um, don't, uh, a quick note on that before we go, don't believe everything you watch uh, on YouTube. Uh, there, there, There's, Obviously, look, the, basically the maximum capacity of these 18650 batteries are 3,500 milliamp hours. Uh, even in my test, I failed because of my in, uh, inability to test correctly. Uh, that These cells are probably around 3,500 milliamp hours. I just, lo um, I just lacked the ability to be able to prove it to you that they do have 3,500 milliamp hours in them. If you start seeing batteries rated to like the there's some fake old like if you look up on YouTube they've got like uh, ultra fire 9,000 milliamp hours in one of these batteries. Of course it's utter BS. The maximum capacity that you can physically get in here uh, is about 3,500 milliamp hours. Uh, if you see anybody else rate saying anything else, uh, it's absolute BS. So yeah, but. They're very, very good. I use them myself, and again, many of you know that I vape. Uh, and these ones, so these are the uh, LG ones, which I bought off eBay. Uh, you can remember from a couple of episodes back. But basically, in comparison, these ones last maybe, well, my, my older ones 
uh, they are only starting to last and you've got to imagine that I've had them for a year okay uh, and I've used them pretty much every well had up until recently been using them every single day is that they would last maybe about half a day to three quarters of a day whereas these ones here the the, the, the LG ones uh, they will last in that pipe for an entire day an entire day uh, and I can tell you the heat setting on that the power setting isn't light by any stretch of the imagination in fact when these ones are in there I actually turn it up so my point being is that don't believe all the bad stories which you see on YouTube. They've been specifically bought to make a YouTube video. Uh, whereas modelers, we're more interested in factual information uh, and how it affects us as modelers. These kind of batteries are perfectly viable. The only consideration, there's two considerations you need to be aware of is number one, soldering them, okay? Is not for the faint of heart. And if you can get them spot welded, spot welded by somebody else, that's happy days and again look back on the YouTube channel uh, and you'll find a previous episode about getting these made up and I've got a kit here still which needs to get worked on all lovely spot welded and everything uh, and the other consideration uh, is the current ca capacity as well uh, these cells are limited on the amount of current which they can produce that's why you make them get them built up in packs like that okay so whatever so if that was rated to 10 amps uh, i would can now pull a maximum of 20 amps out of this pack and weight for weight or gram for gram the power density on these is far superior to a lipo battery uh, but they do come with their own little complexities now i didn't mean to go off into a topic on off topic on to or so deeply into 18650 batteries so where were we uh delayed coffee chat Blame Sir Andrew Newton for that one. Oh, wall hanging. Super impressed with that. Now, I don't like wall hangers at all. I, I, I genuinely feel that a model should be flown. And if it's not being flown, then it needs to go. And I have um, given new homes to a couple of models uh, in, the, in the last day or two. Uh, there's another model here which does need a new home. So I will find it a new home because uh, it's just too good to go in the cement mixer. The Mini Talon. That's progressing. It will be flyable by the end of today. Uh, 18650 batteries. Yeah, do check around the prices on these. And I, like I said, I will put links to both of these uh, in the video description for you. Get FPV. T-shirts. Any ideas on slogans? Please do let me know in the comment section underneath this video. Or uh, let us know over on Facebook as well. That would be absolutely fantastic. It would be great to get a couple of uh, like official Rag the Nuts off t-shirts. Uh, again, it keeps coming up in comments and suggestions and messages. Uh, so any ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and finally, uh, the Wombat. She really does get started tonight because that desk is now being cleared down. I've tidied up my office. I've got plenty of room uh, and I can also get some decent filming done in here as well. So with that said, for myself, Matt, if you are now off work or if it's your last day at work, happy days. Christmas is almost upon us. I know both of my girls are getting super excited. I'm getting super excited. The Christmas tree went up yesterday. Uh, the decorations are up. The lights are up. Uh, I've got the biggest pile of wood to burn. I'm mean, it's excessive amounts, uh, but that little fire will be roaring for the vast majority of the day on Christmas and Boxing Day as well. So, yeah, starting to get festive and shit. I better buy the wife some. Fuck, fuck. All right, I'm sure. Right, if you're anybody, if anybody else is like me, uh, buy wife something. I, ca I can't buy her handbag. She's already. She's already upgraded herself to um, earrings lately uh, instead of uh, instead of a handbag. So, poo. Damn it. Right, better go uh, go shopping and try and find something for the wife today. <laughs> and oops, a slightly longer episode than normal. Just had a lot to cover today. So on that note, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me for today's RC Coffee Chat. And if you're a typical bloke like myself, you might want to go and buy something for the wife. Uh, and uh, if you are the wife, uh, you might want to just nudge your bloke just to see if he's like as crap as me. I mean, he may not have even considered buying you something yet. So subtle hints. Oh, hi Matt, I really like this. Or what do you think of this? And then send him links to like an eBay listing or an Amazon listing or something like that. Somewhere where you can get it really quickly. Hint, hint. 
uh, help him out a bit. So on that note, for myself, Matt, I really am going because I've got to go shopping on Amazon by the looks of it. Uh, I'm off. Thank you ever so much for joining me. See you tomorrow. Cheerios! <laughs>